Howdy everyone, it's me, Zombie, and welcome back to my happy little channel. I am so happy to be back. I have been working my butt off for the past month to get my brand new craft room that I just moved into in working order. And I'm happy to say it's finally ready to start making new projects in. And you better believe that I've been working in here like crazy. I really wanna show you how I put this room together. So without further ado, let's, we're not gonna go to the crafting table this time, but we're going to go to the room. <laughs> Here's my craft room. I love the size of it. The shape really works as well. And I have tons of storage room in the closet, which is a first for me. I can see the potential in it. The things that bothered me the most about this room were the plain beige walls, the old ceiling fan, probably from the 90s, and this really nice new carpet, which usually would be great, but when it's in a craft room, all I can see is all the paint I'm going to spill on it. So I need another rug to protect the workspace. Luckily, this stuff is all cosmetic and it's easily fixable. I'm starting with painting the walls white and putting my beast of a wardrobe in here. I actually had to hire movers to just move this one piece of furniture and uh, they still managed to break it. But hey, it's standing and it still holds my tools, which is great. After the walls were painted, I wanted to paint all the interior doors. I chose this color from Home Depot's paint section called Cavern Moss. I freaking love this green. It's so calming and relaxing and just mwah, amazing. <laughs> I also chose to paint the wardrobes this color too, because why not? On the closet doors, there were these old knobs that I suspect are from the 90s due to the rust on them, but luckily the previous homeowners were nice enough to leave these matte black knobs behind. I'm guessing they wanted to install them at one point, but never did, so they just left them here, which I really do appreciate because now I can put them on the doors and they look really nice. They're just these pull knobs, so they were really easy to install. There wasn't much to them at all. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Anyway, <laughs> I got these cast iron handles from my local craft store and screwed them into the wardrobe. The last knobs I had <laughs> on my doors here were installed crooked, so I made extra sure to screw these on straight unlike last time. I got this neat rug on Amazon that at this point, I still need to straighten out, but you get the idea. But hey, look, a mirror. This mirror is from my old apartment. I used it in my craft room. I absolutely love it. I think it'll work great as a full body mirror for this craft room as well. However, I think it'll look even better if it were gold. So I'm masking off the mirror and then I am bringing it outside to spray paint it gold. After it was dry, I used a chip brush to paint on a thin layer of brown acrylic paint. I personally just liked the look of gold shining through this dark brown color. It just looks uh, rustic? Rustic? Weathered? I don't know. I'm trying here. <laughs> I also switched out the curtains for something a little bit more fluffy and whimsical looking. I like these because they're sheer and they let the light in, but they still kind of obscure from what you can see from the outside, which is nice. I got this wicker chair from Target and draped this fluffy white blanket over it to make it look a bit more cozy. I also used this fluffy white rug to place over the back and another faux fur pillow for some extra cozy comfiness. The plan for this chair is that I could lounge on it whenever I get tired and I can just relax and play switch for a little while, or if Adam or somebody else wanted to come up here and hang out with me while I craft, they would have somewhere where they can relax. I also cut out my usual brown paper that I always tape to my craft table. I love this stuff because it protects my desk and it's really easy to clean up after those messy paint projects. And as you can see, Solaire is very indifferent about this process. I think he's more concerned about the birds outside. <laughs> At this point, I was able to store some of my larger cosplay tools and materials in this spacious closet. I am seriously so jazzed about this closet. It fits so many things. I got this basket from a local craft store and put a small storage container inside of it. 
that also has a trash bag inside. It serves as a low-key garbage can, but it's also small enough that I have to be a responsible human and take out my trash more often, which is a good and a bad thing, I guess. I'm using these baskets to help organize my camera equipment and my most commonly used sewing accessories in. It's great keeping these little baskets at eye level so I can just pull them out of my wardrobe and get them whenever I need them. At this point, I was done unpacking and organizing all my cosplay stuff from the move, and I was shocked by how much room I still have in my tool closet. Is it time to splurge on more cosplay supplies? Hmm. What do you think I should put in here? I feel like the tagline for this video is, look what I got on Amazon, because guess what? I also got these wall sconces on Amazon. I just, they got really good deals, guys. And this was definitely one of those like good deal items. They're on sale and I've always wanted wall sconces in my room. I just think they look so cool and whimsical and magical. And I also get to weather them. I'm just living the dream over here. I just love weathering stuff. I love little wall sconces. Anyway, I didn't hardwire these because I'm not an electrician and I would probably just electrocute myself immediately if I tried. So I just screwed them into the wall and used cable hiders to hold the wires in place. I was going to stop here with my craft room, but then I made the mistake of going on Pinterest and I saw this picture. And I was like, oh man, I need that on my wall. I looked at how much it would cost to get one of those custom printed wallpapers and it was really expensive. So I went with an easier and cheaper option and used supplies that I already had to paint a mural. I wanted this to look like a foggy, magical forest. I painted all the trees before doing anything else. And this part wasn't hard, it just took forever. <laughs> So enjoy that sweet B-roll of me painting all these trees. I decided to keep this last wall blank because it's where I want to do photo shoots of my cosplay when I'm all done with them. I figured I could just put down a white sheet on the floor and be good to go whenever I need to do a solo photo shoot. And I saved this part for last because installing lights and ceiling fans is my least favorite thing ever. I always find that the instructions are not great when it comes to buying fans and stuff online or otherwise for that matter. Or, you know what, maybe I'm just kind of dumb when it comes to this stuff. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna blame the directions. Adam was an absolute champ and helped me put this thing up. And guess what? It turned out great! And Adam definitely loved installing it. I got this light fan combo on Amazon, of course, and it even comes with this little remote that controls how fast the fan goes. It really comes in handy when I want paint to dry or when I'm working with certain glues. And I even installed this remote under my craft room table so I have easy access to it and so I don't lose it. For a final touch, I got some greenery from my local craft store and hung it on my curtain rod. And I also put some on top of my wardrobe. It just adds a little bit of green deliciousness. And that is it. That is my craft room. Everything is done. I'm so happy with how everything turned out. I've been working in here for the past few days on a brand new cosplay project and it is just so lovely and inspiring and relaxing and there's so much light in here. I love it so much. Not to mention my cats love hanging out in here as well, which is just the cherry on top. I also have to take a moment to thank my patrons. Y'all have been so lovely and supportive throughout this process of moving and setting up this new craft room. And I am so grateful for each and every one of you. And if y'all are interested in seeing all my projects early and seeing exclusive videos and pictures and behind the scenes goodies, 
head on over to Patreon. You can see all the exclusive content I've ever made. For just $5, I don't like lock anything. So if you just wanted to go on there and look at all the exclusive content and then cancel, that doesn't hurt my feelings. I just appreciate that you want to be there in the first place. Also, we have a great time on Discord. We love chatting and sharing cosplay progress. And the community is just all around supportive and phenomenal. And I think that speaks a lot to y'all. So thank you so much, and I do hope to see you over there. And of course, I can't end today without featuring some amazing cosplayers. And since I've been gone for so long, I'm gonna feature a whole bunch of them. So strap in, you're about to see some awesome cosplay. The first maker of the week is Natalia on Instagram with her phenomenal Final Fantasy build. She looks gorgeous. We're gonna give her a round of applause. Amazing. Just Some Potate created this custom toothless cosplay. It's her own design. I think she looks adorable. I could tell it was toothless right away. Thank you so much for showing me. The Little Nephilim on Twitter is working on his Final Fantasy Kingslave cosplay. He has a whole video of it. You guys can check it out if you'd like to. I have it posted on my Twitter. Jessica on Instagram showed me her Yennefer cosplay. Wow, I love The Witcher and you look exactly like her. Thank you so much for showing me. Cause Daddy, who is of course a friend of the channel, repainted this infinity gauntlet that they got. I really love the new paint job. It looks like a million bucks. Finally, we have Galaxy Nerd 28, who created this Monster Hunter helmet. It's so cool. I love the tusks. I love the paint. You did a really amazing job. I love seeing what you guys create, whether it's cosplay, a work of art, or otherwise. Please send it to me on Instagram or Twitter. I really do try to reply and look at every single one, and I appreciate it so much that you would take time out of your day to show me what you're making. So thank you so much, everyone who's ever showed me what you're making, and to all you guys in the future, which I hope you will show me the beautiful work of art that you are working on. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, I do hope you will hit that subscribe button, and I will see you again next time. Bye, everyone.